Okay, firstly, thank you. Uh, thank you to you guys for coming. Um, thank you to Cyber Salon for putting on the event um, that we have today. Thank you so much to the PESCO and to Digitas LBI. The event today is going to be on uh, Human 2.0 Technologies of Enhancement. If any of you guys are tweeting, I recommend turning your phone on now. Uh, the Wi-Fi access is uh, Digitas LBI Public and the Wi-Fi password is Bill and Ben. Uh, the B's are capitalized. And we've got the uh, we've got the speakers hashtags and Twitter tags there. So if you want to tweet them abuse during the uh, talk, you want to welcome to try and keep it to a to a minimum. So Ava asked me to introduce this panel. My name is Robert Mason. Uh, originally uh, University of Warwick, followed by uh, MA at Bayad, where I was exploring this notion of the cyborg. But here we are in Brick Lane in London at Digitas LBI, but Brick Lane is that place where statistically most people end up walking into objects because they're staring at their devices. So you see this here at Telephone Communications Company, 118118, have padded the lampposts. <laughs> so it seems almost stupid to talk about the future of humanity if we're still at this stage when it comes to our devices. When we think about uh, the cyborg, we think, oh, we're already, already cyborg now because we have these interactions with these screens. But in actual fact, well, this is the, the media cyborg staring at their shiny, glowing rectangle. And then we go, no, but our iPhones are part of our body because we get that phantom limb thing where we feel the phone vibrating in our pocket even though there's no phone there. Yeah, okay, maybe I'm... Slightly with you there, and then they go, and, but also we've got this wearables thing that makes us cyborgs now. Now, if anyone's followed the wearable tracks or gone to these uh, wearable exhibits, you kind of feel like buckaroo, where everyone's trying to put all of their little wearable devices onto you and say, <laughs> you're going to be a cyborg because we're capturing your data and making little versions of you. In actual fact, you just kind of go, come on, get it off, please. So... She's done a lot of damage. I love Amber K, cyborg anthropologist, but she's given license to people to start claiming that we're all cyborgs now and we can start cyborg marketing departments because our relationship to our device makes a cyborg problematic. And we'll explore that in the panels today. And problematic in many ways, if you look at the Stop the Cyborg, and I think the gentleman who runs this is in the room today, uh, mainly about surveillance and use of these devices. So we're seeing this word cyborg reappear and we're seeing a problem as it enters into uh, uh, discourse around device use. We want to stop the cyborgs. We have Dave King with us today from Luddite 200. He's probably going to give us a more extreme view of that future. So what do we think when we think human enhancement? Well, the first thing we look at is human. And the problem with human enhancement, as we sometimes perceive it, is we, we're very quick to see the human body as an architectural site in which we can stuff all these devices that were already said. And equally, how do we look at this term enhancement? Does it always mean better or more enabled? Could it also mean different? Do we have to necessarily subscribe to uh, transhumanist philosopher Max Moore's concept of morphological freedom where we can transcend and make the body better? through enhancement. Now for me, again, the, the, the enhancement debate came to life just around the corner in Old Street where I was leaving the tube station and saw this poster in 2012, a poster for incredible broadband, followed by this poster here for advanced biofuels. And the thing that joins both of these posters is the use of the Paralympian. To position the Paralympian as no longer disabled, but enabled. And Steve Fuller will probably talk about ableism and this reorienting our, um, our vision of those who are notionally disabled as enabled by having these uh, devices. Um, Hugh Herr, for example, has, device, um, has prosthetic limbs which allow him to climb better. He was a professional climber before he lost both of his limbs. And of course, when we think about human enhancement, 25 years of cyber sound, we always come back to Stellarp. Perhaps Stellarp's probably 
where the problem starts with the notion of the cyborg, because Stella was obsessed about how we upgrade the human body to deal with these new extraterrestrial environments of speed and complexity, known as the infosphere or, or cyberspace. Pick your metaphor. And we kept hold of that notion of the cyborg. Maybe it's time to revisit this term, cyborg, and not understand the, the definition of a cyborg, but the concept of being cyborg. And you're going to see um, panelists today who self-identify perhaps as cyborg. So we, um, uh, Stellar was exploring these extra limbs, and today um, we see Nigel Ackland will show you today the bee bionic uh, limb. But then we have, because we're in Shoreditch, David said I had to show some 3D printing. So we have some 3D printing limbs, this one on Indiegogo. There we go, I've got Kickstarter funding in there as well. <laughs> and then this guy here, Easton La Chapelle, who uh, 3D printed a limb at only 14. But the question is, aesthetically, are those limbs maybe good enough? They may be cheap enough. We'll explore that in the panel today. And there we go, I have some apps as well, because we're in shortage. <laughs> iTouch Bionics allow users to control their prosthetic limb through an iPhone device. But is it all about functionality? Is it also about aesthetics, perhaps? We're lucky enough to have Veronica Pete, a client of the Alternative Limb Project, who will share with you today um, the creation of her own bespoke uh, prosthetic limb. And we have Rachel Armstrong, who worked with Orlan, thinking beyond devices or beyond... Um, uh, prosthesis to uh, surgery and implants, or maybe uh, pharma borgs, uh, guys taking enhancing drugs. One of them, for example, in, enhanced herself aesthetically through the use of the surgery grindhouse wetwear, are adding um, magnets under their fingertips so they can feel the electromagnetic radiation from their devices, giving themselves extra sensors. And it's perhaps these things here that allow us to start exploring, not the cyborg as this thing that deals with information environments, but the cyborg as a, a sensory cyborg, because we better understand the nature of human perception non human animal perception. How can we start leveraging this understanding to explore different notions of cyborg? Um, if you look at the work in sensory substitution systems, for example, where people are, are crossing the senses or replacing the, uh, not replacing the sight with eyes that see, but perhaps placing the sight with a hearing device that also sees. And, of course, we're lucky enough today to have Neil Harbisson, who has almost a bespoke synesthetic experience, whereby he hears colour. And I'll let him tell you more. So perhaps we could have sensory augmentation, not just information-based um, augmentation. For example, the Fill Space project in Germany allows users to fill the electromag um, the electromagnetics of the Earth to orient magnetic uh, north. And there's artists exploring the morphology of certain animals to extend their own senses and their being in the world. This is Christopher Beckham's project, which allows him to navigate the world like an ant, and he put in the sensor project here, which gives this gentleman whiskers. So, and as a late addition to the program, we're lucky enough to have Adrian Cheok today, who's going to give a live demo of his new uh, smelly device. And Adrian spoke about, back in 2012 when I first met him, moving from information communication to perhaps experience communication. <clears throat> so today we're going to have a look at where some of these feedback loops exist in the debate around human enhancement, explore some of the possibilities both now, in the future, and perhaps how we can get involved in shortage, making apps, 3D printing, and some funding stuff, if that's what 